Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks. And in this episode, we're going to take a look at this page right here. I'll be honest with you, I'm not even sure what ClickFunnels calls this page, but I'm going to call it the Funnel Editor page just to distinguish it from the Page Editor, which you go into when you click on the Edit Page button right there. So let's just start off at the top of the page. And right up here, that's the name of your funnel itself. If we come over here, you can copy the URL to the clipboard for this funnel. And uh, right here, you can go and visit the funnel. Now, if you look down in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see where the, uh, the funnel URL is popping up. And it says it's real-marketing.clickfunnels.com slash test sales page with some numbers and letters. Well, you can clearly see that is different than this URL right here, or it's even different than the very first URL. URL in the page, which will be realmarketing.clickfunnels.com slash squeeze page. So I have another video where I'm going to go through all the different URLs and different ways to create paths within ClickFunnels. So it'll clear it up for you, but we'll hit on a lot of it as we go through this page as well. So now uh, let's just keep going across the page for right now. Uh, next tab we get to is going to be our stats tab. And as you see, of course, this is a brand new funnel, so there aren't going to really be any statistics at this point. But you can see all the different things. Every single page has its own statistics, the page views, opt-ins, all of that. And you can click on this little funnel-looking thing, and you can set up your UTM parameters, your affiliate IDs, things like this, so you can better track where your people are coming from. And then when you're done, you just click on Apply the Filter. The next tab is your contact. And again, as people opt into your funnel, they'll be added to this list and you can look at them over time, all time, last seven days, whatever you would like. The next tab, again, will show us all of our sales within this funnel. And being a new funnel, it's completely empty. And then again, we got our time frames, and you can also do click on uh, download purchases. And instead of all the funnel steps, you can just pick out which page you want to look at sales on. On this one right here, we only have one page with any order form on it. So we would just click on the order forms page. Now we can go into the funnel wide settings. And in here, we can set up the title of the funnel. We can give it a custom domain and a bunch of other things. So right here is our test sales page title as we have it right here. So let's just modify this and let's give it like an XYZ at the end just to differentiate it. And then down below it here is where the path is. If we want this path to change when we change the title of this funnel, we just wipe this out and when we save the page, it will recreate that path. When we set everything up, we just did it inside of a group tag that we called cookbook. So to put it into that folder on our funnels page right here. And then earlier also we set up all of our domains. So this is where your domain list is. And so we can just come down and click on Real Funnel Marketing for our domain. Your SMTP configuration, if you have that set up, you can come in and pick out which one you want. In my case here, I'm going to go with internal, which for me, that's what I call the one that's hooked up to Actionetics. Your favicon URL, what that is, is it's going to be that little thing up here. You see the little gear for click funnels. That's going to go in here, and I'm going to have more training on that when I talk about images inside of the page editor. It's a lot easier just to talk about it there than to, to do it here. Then you got your head tracking and your body tracking code. And normally what you're going to put into your head tracking code is going to be like your Google Analytics and your Facebook pixels. And I just typed that in there to remind myself. And body tracking code could be really any kind of JavaScript or anything else that you need to be able to run special functions on your page. Now before I forget, up here at the top we got three more tabs. One is reset stats. What will happen is you're going to be doing a lot of testing on your funnel as you're building it out. But then when you get ready to send it live out to the world and start sending some traffic to it, you're going to want to click on this to reset your stats so that you got good numbers inside of your stats. And you may also want to go in and if you did a bunch of test emails on your contacts, you might want to go in and delete all those test emails out as well and possibly any, any sales that you might have created ahead of time while you were doing your testing. 
Now, also here, we got the share funnel link and we have a place to clone our funnel. This one here is if you want to give this funnel to somebody else. And this one here to clone the funnel will clone the entire funnel inside of your account. And I have a video on this that goes into much more detail on how to clone and share and create templates and stuff like that. So again, down here, we have the exact same as up at the top for the share funnel. And then we have our Stripe account. We have, we can pick out which one of our Stripe accounts we want to use. I will leave it on my default. We can turn on and off test mode. And again, if you're doing uh, enabling Stripe's test mode, you would use this credit card number right here, but that also appears on any page where test mode is active. As I said, and I think the very first video, I have not used Backpack at all yet, so I'm gonna leave that alone for right now. Now with Zapier, this is really cool because you can take data from inside of ClickFunnels, users' names, other information they put in, purchase history, things like that, and you can send that information out to third parties like Gmail, MailChimp, Google Sheets, ActiveCampaign, Infusionsoft, and many, many more. Once you get inside of Zapier and start working with it, it's really crazy the number of different third-party users you can send this off to. But what they did a couple of months ago is they made it also now so that you can take data from outside sources like a Google Sheet and you can pass that back into ClickFunnels. So it goes both ways now. It's kind of limited, but you can still do a lot of really cool stuff. And the only way you can really get to know this is you just got to play with some of it. You can choose one of these apps. You go over to Zapier, you create yourself an account, and you just start playing around with sending information back and forth. Now, webhooks are exactly the same thing as Zapier. It's just that if you can't find a way to do it inside of Zapier, you're going to have to create a webhook. And I've looked at this very, very briefly. And basically, you're pretty much going to need a programmer or somebody who really knows webhooks in order to set this up for you. And then finally on this page... We have third-party membership access, and where I use this is for PayPal version 1, and you'll see that in the payment gateway section where we talk about PayPal. But as you can see here, you can set up products from outside sources like ClickBank and JVZoo and other places. And so the last thing on the page here is archiving the funnel. Anytime you want to get a funnel out of your list of funnels on this page right here, just come down to the bottom of that funnel and click on archive and it also says delete it doesn't technically delete it it just puts it into an archive folder which when you have the the lower level uh, plans I forget how many funnels you're allowed for each level of plan but if you want to get them out of your account so they don't count against your plan you can just drop them into the archive folder and they're still there so you could have really good funnels. You could have really good stuff that you built out. You could drop it into the archive folder and then come back at a later date and go, oh, okay, I had a really good idea on that one. Pull that archived funnel up, take a look at it, pull some data out of it, pull, you know, pull some templates or whatever out of it, and then put it back into the archive bin and it's not going to count against you. So now let's go and click on save and update our settings. And the first thing you're going to notice is the URL for the squeeze page and all the other pages has now changed from our ClickFunnels subdomain that we had before, which was real-marketing.clickfunnels.com. It has now changed to our custom domain that we have set up and that we indicated in our settings tab that we wanted for this funnel. And so here's where we set up our custom domain. And as you recall, we also changed the title of the funnel itself. We put the XYZ there, and now it has appended that again with a series of numbers and letters at the end. So that is it for this video. On the next video, we're going to pick up with publishing, and then we're going to go into our funnel steps before finishing out the section on the funnel editor. If you have any questions, reach out to ClickFunnels support, and I'll see you in the next video.